Hello everyone, I'm Rick Dior and this is a set of Craviatos. Beautiful drum set and I wanted to show you these today and talk about them a little. There's um, quite the legend around uh, Johnny Craviato and the company. Now, Johnny's no longer with us, as all of you know, but the company's going strong. I am not an endorser or anything, I just admire their drums quite a bit. So I did a little demo there for you uh, of just a few different styles so you could hear the drums and um, in some different contexts. And I'll play them more in a minute, but we'll talk about them real quick. As you know, I own many, many, many drum sets and they're all so different. And some cheap drum sets I own, like that Gretsch Catalina that I play sometimes on this channel. And even though that's, you know, a $400 drum set probably at the most. Those drums sound really good too. So it's not necessarily uh, paying, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars for a drum set that's going to make you sound better. I remember hearing Elvin Jones on a really crappy, really crappy drum set doing a clinic years ago. And, you know, it still sounded like Elvin. It sounded great. So this is more about craftsmanship and enjoying the quality of great drum making. Uh, there's a company that I do endorse, Doc Sweeney. Uh, Steve makes amazingly beautiful drums, and these are as well. So we'll talk about these today, play them a little. I'll give you my thoughts about them, and uh, you know we'll go from there. I'm sure I'll have lots of comments. I know there's almost a cultish kind of Craviato following, and rightly so, not the cult part, but they are just beautiful drums and they sound amazing. Just a quick word about my um, microphone setup here. It's very spare and minimum. Two overheads, they're um, Sennheiser MKH 800s in cardioid pattern. And on the bass drum out in front, I have an AKG D112. There's no hole in the bass drum as you see here. It's right outside the bass drum. So we'll get quite a bit of boom like that. Eventually, I might put like a uh, muffler, like a Gary Chafee bass drum muffler on there. I'll have to go in the control room after I record this and see what it sounds like. But again, I just got these drums, so it's going to be a little bit of a learning process for me. But from what I'm getting here, it's bass drum sounds pretty, pretty huge, a lot of low end. And I believe in the three mic concept. I've talked about that a lot. Uh, the drums are not mic'd individually. So what you're hearing is, is a very good representation of how these drums really sound. There's no compression, no EQ, it's just kind of straight into the uh, camera and there we go. So this particular kit is a 20 by 15 inch bass drum, which is an odd size, but sounds great. Uh, acoustically that works because it's not a square size. It doesn't even get close to it. Uh, sometimes a 20 by 18, that's not going to be good because it's a square size. So the uh, the resonance can get a little strange, a little boomy. But this bass drum uh, is a really nice sounding drum. And there's no muffling at all anywhere on this kit right now, nothing. And in fact, I left the stock heads on here. I'm going to change them because uh, it's not my personal preference. But I will change these heads, but I wanted to show you how these come, uh, you know, when they're, when they're brand new or, or close to brand new, what they sound like. Uh, I did tune them up. They are very, very easy to tune. Uh, Pitch-wise, they're very pure. So, you know, these drums will have a pretty wide tuning range depending on the heads you put on them. I found that solid shell drums, uh, steam bent in other words, will have a much wider tuning range. Uh, I have several old Radio Kings and Toms and Snares and, and I've always 
you know, notice that you tune them high, you tune them low, and they still sound good. That's one benefit about a solid shell. Not to say plywood shells can't sound amazing as well, and they do, as well as staff shells. And I've showed you both of these on this channel at different times. So uh, this is what's called a stacked shell. So they're taking, uh, you know, three different or two different woods and stacking them. In this case, it's a curly maple, and that's stacked between two other layers here. Now, uh, the thing about these drums, they have a black, beautiful piano uh, finish on there, um, on the other either side of the curly maple layer here. And uh, that's going to be hard to keep clean for those of you who are um, kind of anal retentive about that. I'm not. I'll polish it up every once in a while, but uh, it's like a piano. It'll attract dust and fingerprints and all that. So that's just something you should be aware of. Now, the snare drum, I'll give you the size of the, of the drums. Snare drum is a 6 by 14 uh, and the first tom here is a 10 by 8 and the second tom is a 12 by 8 and we have a 14 by 14 floor tom. I already told you the size of the bass drum, 20 by 15. Now, uh, one thing I don't necessarily love about this kind of setup is the mounted toms on the uh, cymbal arms here. Uh, it's kind of the virgin bass drum concept. I was never really a big fan of that. Uh, I understand the concept that you want to get those toms off of there, but uh, it's a pain in the ass, excuse my language, to set these things up. Uh, I would much rather them be on the bass drum. You do get a little less sympathetic vibration, but you still get quite a bit. And one of my things when I tune is I tune to get that sympathetic vibration off of the bass drum, especially when they're attached to the bass drum, the toms that is. So that kind of takes that out of the equation. And the other thing is getting a setup quickly takes a long time. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the neck, like I just said to do that. So, uh, but I'm not going to install a mount on this particular drum set. That would kind of be a travesty, in my opinion. Now, I have done that on other drums. I had some Tama Star Classics, also Virgin bass drum. I had no problems with uh, installing the DW sliding mount, which I love on that, as well as a pork pie kit. Uh, because those drums, you know, they're great drums. Those are my gigging drums. We'll probably not take these out too much. Maybe very special occasions, but I don't see myself taking these out of the house. They're probably going to stay in the house like a piece of furniture, and I'll just enjoy playing on them. So let's talk about tuning them a little bit. Um, like I said, when I got them uh, from, uh, I got them from a former student of mine, and they were tuned very low, uh, in pitch too low in my opinion, uh, a lot of times with these smaller drums, folks try to get sort of a rock tuning out of them. And uh, you can tune these drums. They'll still sound good, but they won't sound great. They have, like I said before, a very wide tuning range. But if you tune them too low, they bottom out, and then they don't really hold a pitch. So after a while, they'll just keep bending down and down. Uh, I think this is a pretty good tuning for these. I consider this sort of a jazz uh, tuning, but you could also use it for, you know, other kinds of music. So it's sort of an all-round tuning I have here. Now, if I was going to do a jazz gig on, I'd probably tune them just a little higher, maybe one a step on, on each drum here. But they do sound great for playing any kind of jazz. I'll play a little for you.
very melodic sounding, very pure tone. Now the bass drum, I tuned a little bit low. I'm going to experiment with that. It always takes a while to get used to the, um, you know, the different bass drums for these kits. But it's got a nice, deep sound. And one of the things I've noticed about it immediately is when I play it, there's a lot of good feedback from my end. So... So uh, unlike some of my other 20s, I have a lot of kits with 20-inch bass drums. This one is louder, <laughs> and it's uh, I really hear it a lot better. I feel like I can play it pretty light, although it might sound loud there. I can play it fairly light and get a lot of sound out of it. So uh, that's a big plus if you play louder gigs. But also it's very sensitive. I'll do a little feathering here for you. nice and deep wow great actually best sounding 20 i've ever played on as far as just having a huge sound sounds like a 22 to me or maybe even a 24 with that depth to it so that's great uh the front head is i believe an aquarian eq i'm not sure i'll look and um it, it's stock whatever it is i think i'm going to put calf heads on this thing in fact, I'm going to try calf heads on all of these, and I'll do another video once I do that because I'm really curious. But these are the stock heads they're Aquarian. But, you know, the drums sound great now. Probably shouldn't take the heads off, but I'm going to and change them. Uh, let's talk a little about the snare drum. Uh, to me, this is a, a great-sounding drum. There's no muffling on it, but it's, it's uh, pretty dry. Feels great, a lot of good feedback from it. It's nice and uh, dynamic. <clears throat> I might do a little muffling on it if I was playing in a small room. And the throw off is a trick throw off, which I love. Sorry, I'm losing my voice again. It's got different levels, as you all know, of on and off. So those are three levels, and it's very adjustable. So it's no problems there at all. Uh, I will experiment again with this with heads. <clears throat> I'm very new to these things. I just basically picked them up yesterday. And as far as the cross room click goes, sounds good to me. That's pretty much all I got to say about them. I'm loving them. I've just basically just set them up just now, turned on the cameras, and started playing with them. I did tune the toms individually earlier, uh, but I'll, I'll experiment. And as I do that, I'll post some more things. But, uh, you know, I kind of can't stop looking at them. They're so pretty. And whenever you get a new kit, you know, it's always kind of that kind of high about that. Um, that'll wear off. <laughs> but, uh, you know... I have nothing bad to say about these things. I've always wondered about them. I have played them at some shows before. Never sounded good there in the big hall and lots of noise. And, uh, you know, the tuning wasn't great. Um, but, yeah, uh, I highly recommend them if you can afford them. So these are the Craviato. Uh, again, let me look at the name here. Yeah, Private Reserve. And we'll play a little more, and uh, we'll call it a day. <laughs> 